Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll take a look at how to compute the efficient frontier for the returns, the portfolio returns for a portfolio of stocks. So in this uh, example, I'm going to assume two stocks. One is Best Buy and the other is AT&T. What I do is I go to the website uh, yahoofinance.yahoo.com and I download the stock returns or the monthly stock returns for both these stocks from January 1st, 2014 through January 1st, 2015. You can scroll all the way down and you can download to a spreadsheet. So here is the downloaded data. I've just retained the date and the adjusted close. I've deleted all the other stuff. And um, you can see that these are monthly returns uh, starting from first uh, from, from January 2014 to December 2014 for both AT&T and Best Buy. The adjusted close prices reflect the closing prices of these stocks at the end of the day or uh, as on this date and they're adjusted for stock splits and dividends and other uh, corporate events. Since these dates are identical, I'm also going to delete these dates. So um, first we'll compute the returns for both these stocks. The returns for AT&T are the present month's um, stock price divided by the previous month's stock price minus one. And you can just use the same formula for Best Buy as well. And you can copy this formula by clicking on the bottom right fill handle over here. When you hover your mouse on it, it'll become a uh, you know a dark plus sign, and just select, uh, drag this formula all the way down, and you don't have to uh, retain this value here because we don't have the previous month's prices. Uh, this will appear to be uh, an error, so you can delete that, and you can also uh, format this as a percentage if you want. I'll just retain a couple of decimal places. We can now compute the average, um, the variance the standard deviation, the covariance, and the correlation. So the mean or the variance is, no, the mean is nothing but the average return of AT&T over the 12 months. And you can copy this formula to the right. The variance is nothing but the spread. It's a, it's a measure of the spread of the returns over the 12 months. And the standard deviation is the square root of the variance or it has its own formula as well. Finally, the covariance. The covariance is a measure of how the stock returns of AT&T and Best Buy covary with each other. If the covariance is positive and high, then that means there's a lot of, you know, if one rises, the other rises and so on. If one falls, the other falls. So let's uh, measure covariance of AT&T returns, comma, Best Buy returns. And correlation is just a kind of a normalized covariance. So Correlation is uh, covariance uh, normalized to say between minus one and one. You can think of it that way. So um, there is a negative correlation between AT&T and Best Buy. The most negative it could be is minus one, but it's minus 0.33. And the most positive it could be is one is positive one. Um, so that's a range of correlation. Now, if you have a portfolio of both these stocks, so that means let's say you have 50% of AT&T and the rest of it as Best Buy. So basically, if you have $100, you allocate $50 to buy AT&T and $50 to buy Best Buy. So if that's the case, then you have constructed a portfolio. The return of the portfolio is the weighted returns of AT&T and Best Buy. So the AT&T return times AT&T weight plus Best Buy return times Best Buy weight. And you can uh, change the E1 to a dollar sign. And the purpose of this is that if you want to copy this formula down, as I will in a short while, then you can copy it easily. I just want to change the format here. Just decrease the decimal places, it should be fine. And now if you just click on the fill handle, you can copy this formula all the way down. And you can see, for example, at some random cell here, you can see the same formula that was here has been applied. So you don't have to cop, you don't have to keep typing the formula again. And now if you wanted to find the mean of the portfolio return, you do the exact same thing. In fact, I can copy this formula over here. So this would be the average of all these returns here. There's a portfolio return. Um, the portfolio variance, again, I can copy this here and the portfolio standard deviation can also be copied like this. There is another way to compute the portfolio mean variance and standard deviation. And that is to basically take the proportion of these stocks and multiply them by the 
mean of AT&T returns and add it up with the weighted mean of Best Buy. Okay. When it comes to variance, there's a slightly more complicated formula. So the portfolio variance is given by this formula. So let me just uh, denote AT&T by T here and Best Buy by B. So XT refers to this 50% here or whatever is the proportion of AT&T in the overall returns. And XB refers to this proportion of the Best Buy in the overall portfolio. RT refers to uh, the return for AT&T and the variance of RT refers to this value here. Um, RB refers to the return for Best Buy and the variance of RB refers to this value here. And the covariance of RT and RB refers to this figure here. So we apply this formula here to compute the variance of the portfolio and that is the proportion of AT&T squared times the variance of AT&T plus the proportion of Best Buy squared times the variance of Best Buy plus two times the proportion of AT&T times the proportion of Best Buy times the covariance of the two stocks. If you press enter, you should get pretty much the same figure. In fact, here, if I increase the number of decimal places, it'll be identical. So these two are really the same figure computed in different ways. And the standard deviation is just the square root of that. So we don't have to focus on that. Now, the neat thing with this formula is that now we can actually construct a, a set of uh, scenarios where we are, con we are looking at different kinds of different proportions of uh, AT&T and Best Buy stock. So supposing you have 0% of AT&T stock, then you will have 100 percent minus of zero percent which is and if you have ten percent or twenty percent and so on and if i were to just copy this all the way till hundred percent you would correspondingly have lesser and lesser of best buy stock the portfolio mean can now be calculated as the weighted average the weighted sum of the means that is AT&T's weightage times the mean for AT&T plus Best Buy's weightage times the mean for Best Buy, mean return for Best Buy. Now before we copy this down, we also need to make a change to the values of D16 and E16. We have to make it into dollar signs. The way you do that is just click on the that particular formula and press F4 and it will insert dollar signs so you can copy it conveniently. Now we compute variance using this uh, formula that we saw a little bit earlier. So the variance is uh, nothing but the proportion of at t squared times variance of at t plus the proportion of Best Buy squared times the variance of Best Buy plus two times proportion of at t times proportion of Best Buy times the covariance and again we have to make sure to put the dollar signs in front of D17 and E17 and D19 press enter double click on this fill handle and you'll get this here standard deviation is nothing but the square root of variance so raised to the power 1 by 2 and copy this all the way down so now that you have this standard deviation and the mean, you can draw a nice graph that shows the efficient frontier. So to do that, go to insert, scatter, and you can choose one of these, scatter with smooth lines and markers. Okay, now I am going to remove all the data that's already there and just select it afresh. Click on add and x values are all the standard deviation values these are the risk these are a measure of the risk riskiness of stock or the portfolio in this case and the y values are the mean returns and these represent the returns obviously of the portfolio and if you select those two then you'll get a nice curve like this just click ok for now and uh, ok so what this curve represents is on the x-axis it represents 
the standard deviation or the riskiness the higher the x-axis value the high the more risky the portfolio of stock and the y-axis represents the return or the reward that you get for holding that stock so the higher the value of the y-axis the better it is to hold the stock so you really want a stock that has the lowest possible risk and the highest possible return so you want a stock that is as close to this particular area as possible so let's take a look at this particular stock here i would like to uh, format uh, you know add data labels here so any point on this uh, curve basically represents a certain fraction of at and and a certain fraction of best buy that you would hold in your portfolio of stocks so now let's take this return here of 0.5% which represents this one here. So this is pretty low return and this also has some risk. Can you improve a little bit? Can you go to some other point on this line, on this curve, where you can improve your return and improve your risk? Yes, you can. And that is this point here, which has a lower risk and a higher return. And this point is even better. It has an even lower risk and even higher return. But this point is really the best of the of these four points. It has the lowest risk and the highest return. Now, if you go to these other points here, as you go further and further towards this, your return is improving, but your risk is also increasing. So if you hold this portfolio here, basically you're taking you're getting a lot of return potentially, but you're also taking a lot of risk, a lot of variability. So the efficient frontier here really is the set of all points where you could pick any one of these points and um, depending on your risk and return trade-off. Now, any point below this should not be picked because you can actually improve upon it by picking some point on this curve here. So for example, if you wanted to choose this point, you could choose this other point here which has the exact same riskiness but has much higher returns. The region above this line here, this curve here, represents the efficient frontier. So that's it for now. I hope you liked it. Thank you for watching.